Hello. OK, can you hear me? Yep. OK, cool. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so first off, who, who actually did the homework and read the papers? I'm, I'm always curious what, what percentage of people actually read the papers. OK, all right, all right. Um, second, uh, if, uh, if I say uh, n choose r, like who here knows what that means? OK, so like maybe half. OK, um, all right. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be presenting copy sets and tiered replication. Uh, this is actually two different papers. Uh, the first one is called copy sets replication, and the second one is called tiered replication. Um, so you guys are going to get uh, double the fun here. Um, so when I was uh, when I was a uh, I think I think a, a sophomore uh, at Berkeley, I was I was a uh, I was a grader for a class. I was taught by Christos uh, Papadimitriou, and he. Um, I went to him one day and I said, you know, what would it take to, uh, to do research for you? Um, you know, as an undergraduate, and he said, well, well here's what, what happened. You would come to me, I'd give you a problem, you'd think about it, and then you'd solve it. And that was like, uh, you know, uh, like awe-inspiring and terrifying to me at the same time. It was like, you know, like mundane and like also um, sort of mind-blowing that like, yeah, people just go around thinking about problems and solving them. What I really like about, um, about the copy sets problem is that it is, it's something, the, the, the solution for this is, is actually pretty straightforward and elegant and simple. Um, the, uh, the brilliance of this, I think, actually comes from uh, the framing of the problem and like even realizing that there is a problem in the first place. Um, so uh, yeah, so I will go over some of this. Uh, the paper is authored by Asaf Sidon. Um, the copy sets replication paper won a uh, best student paper award at Usenix in 2013. Uh, tiered replication uh, was a follow up on that in 2015. So copy sets actually is sort of broken up into two sections. Uh, the first section is, um, uh, is the statement of the problem and then the second section is the copy sets algorithm. I'm actually not gonna talk about that. Uh, tiered replication solves the copy sets problem in a, uh, in a simpler way. So uh, we'll do the first half of the first paper and then the second half of the second paper. It should all make sense now. All right, um, so what's the problem? Uh, suppose you have, um, you have a database, uh, you're storing your data on a bunch of different nodes. Um, so uh, you would like to have copies of your data on, a, you know, on some nodes. You have to decide which nodes should some piece of data be on, right? It's, you know, it seems like a straightforward thing. Um, uh, the, uh, simplest thing to do is basically just to pick a random uh, set of nodes to place your data on. Um, if not random, you do something that is like somewhat random. Like you know, if you're uh, if you're Reoc, uh, and you're doing like a key value thing, you might hash the key and figure out um, uh, which two nodes that hash corresponds to, for instance. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk about the problem uh, with a replication factor of two, just because it's, uh, it's a bit simpler, um, but the solution generalizes to everything. So the, the standard way of doing this is with random replication, and this is what systems like uh, HDFS use. Uh, so uh, let me go over that. Okay. Let's say that we have, uh, we have an HDFS cluster. Uh, there are six nodes in it, so it's a pretty small cluster. We set an R of two, right? Um, and we'd like to place our data on, uh, on sets of replicas. So each one of these things in curly is, uh, is one set, and, and, uh, and each one of the letters is one server. So we say, okay, our first replica set is A, B, so all data that hits that, uh, that set gets copied to A and B. Right. Our second one is AC, so all data that hits that set gets copied to A and C. The third one is AD, so on and so forth. Um, uh, there are 15 possible combinations here, so this is six choose two. Right? Um, it's a small cluster, so it's a small number. Um, but uh, you know, the, the point here is that if you, uh, if you throw enough data onto here, if, if enough data maps onto, onto these different sets, then you will actually have data on every single possible two-server combination there is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you have data on every single possible two-server combination, if you have a two-server failure, you're guaranteed to lose data. So this is problematic. Um, if you have a two-server failure, you're gu guaranteed to lose data, and also 1 15th um, of your data will go away because there are 15 of these things. 
So, um, so this comes from the copies of this paper. Uh, they simulated various replication strategies. Um, uh, HDFS is random, RAM cloud is random. Facebook is, is a peculiar kind of a random. Um, I'll come back to that in the next slide. Uh, but you can see, so on the x-axis, number of nodes. Uh, on the y-axis, if 1% if of the nodes fail, what's the probability that you lose data? Uh, and very quickly shoots up to 100%. So the more data you throw onto your system, the more likely you are to lose data if you have, uh, if, if you have node failures. So it seemed to be a problem, right? Oops, sorry. Okay, Facebook replication is a little bit um, uh, different. So Facebook actually, according to the paper, Facebook went in and modified their version of HDFS to take a different uh, strategy here. Um, the paper, unfortunately, I think is a little bit confusing. It's exactly what the strategy is. So I'm going to say what I think the strategy is, which makes the most sense given like the following words in the paper. Um, so the idea is, um, is you restrict the number of sets that you actually use. And rather than, than, uh, than just picking two servers at random, you say, okay, one set is A and B, and the other is B and C. The next one is C and D, right? So on and so forth. Um, and if you, if you actually just order all of these nodes, so A, B, C, D, E, F, right? What you'll, what you'll, uh, what you'll notice is that the sets are basically adjacent nodes. So, th so this is actually how React works, right? So React has this, this, uh, this notion of the ring. Um, and in React, you, uh, you take a key. Um, the key hashes to some, um, I forget what it's called, some partition ID essentially, which is mapped to some node on the ring, and then the replication is set for subsequent nodes um, from the one that it was mapped to. Uh, so here, because there are only six sets, uh, we, de we, we get different failure characteristics. If we have two random nodes fail, right? So, so again, there are 15 possible combinations of two servers. Right? If we have two random nodes failed and six out of 15, uh, that's, that's the chance that you'll actually lose, any, lose some data. Right? Um, and because all data is mapped to six different sets, if you lose data, you will lose one sixth of it. Or if there are two nodes that, uh, you know, that, that, uh, 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 that fail in one of these sets, then you will lose one sixth of your data. All right, so here's, just for completeness, here's another example. Um, so, right, so again, six nodes, uh, but instead we're just gonna set them up in, in pairs. So this looks maybe more like Mongo. Um, and here, uh, here there are only three sets, so the probability that you'll lose, um, you'll lose data if two random nodes fail is three out of 15, so that's 20%. Um, if you do lose data, you will lose one third of it. Okay, so far, this all makes sense, yep. All right. Okay, so, uh, so copies as replication introduces uh, some extra terminology. Um, so n, number of nodes, we know what that is. R is a replication factor, so the number of copies um, of every piece of data that we have. Scatter width is new. So scatter width is, um, is the number, if, if you have a single node fail, scatter width is the number of other nodes that you can restore that single node from. Um, this took me like literally half a year to understand. <laughs> it, it seems simple, but it's like, yeah, I, it, oh, yeah, you know, maybe it is simple and I'm, I'm dumb, so. Okay, so let's, let's go through a couple of examples. So here's a scatter width of four. Um, uh, and and here, here we have six nodes, but our replication factor here is three, right? So I've just invented these sets. So the first set is ABC. So data basically gets mapped to, um, uh, to ABC or BCD or CDE or you know, so on and so forth. Um, now, if node A fails and we restore node A, right, the data that was on A was replicated to B and C. And here, if you look at uh, sets five and six, the data that was on E, E was copied to F and A, um, and the data that was on F was copied to A and B as well. So if A fails, we can restore all of A's data from B, C, E, and F. So B, C, E, and F, right, so these are the, that's, that's a set of unique nodes that also contain data um, that belongs on A. So this is a scatter width of four. Scatter width of two. Um, so this is more straightforward. This you know, looks more like Mongo again. So you've got two sets, right? Um, uh, half your data maps to ABC. So anything that hits server A gets copied to B and C. Um, anything that hits uh, server D gets copied to E and F. Uh, if A goes down and you bring A back up from you know, clean start, um, uh, it can get half of its data from B and half of its data from C. So it's a scatter width of two. 
Uh, here's random assignment. Um, I haven't listed out all the sets, but there are 15 of them. Uh, the thing to note here is that A basically participates in, in a set with every other node. So your scatter width here is five or n minus one. Uh, here's a Facebook replication. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. I, I, I should point out here, um, what's the expected amount of, uh, of, of data loss? So if two servers fail, right, um, then you, you have 100% uh, chance that you'll lose data. Uh, the expected amount of data you'll lose is 1 over 15. So uh, I'm sorry, the amount of data you'll lose is 1 over 15. So the expected loss is 100% 1 times 1 over 15 or 6.7%. Um, here's, whoa. Facebook replication. Um, so uh, there are six sets. So the probability of loss is six over 15 or 40%. If you lose data, you lose one sixth of it. Uh, the scatter width here is two. Um, now the expected amount of loss is 40%, right? The chance of loss times the amount that you will lose one over six or 6.7%. Curious? Simple assignment, three sets. Your chance of loss is 20%. If you lose data, you lose one third of it. The scatter width here is one. The expected amount of loss, again, is 6.7%. Okay, so the point here is um, uh, choosing different ways to replicate your data doesn't necessarily get you better expected loss outcome, but it does get you different probabilities of loss. So this is, this is you know, where, where I mentioned before that the, um, the framing of the problem or the realization that there is a problem uh, for copy sets, I, I think is actually the brilliant part of it, is that it is possible to control the kind of failure. Like you will fail at some point, but you can control the failure. All right, so the importance of S, the scatter width. Um, so S affects the probability of loss. Um, it affects the speed of restoring a node, right? The larger your scatter width, the more nodes you can pull from. Um, a complement of that is the load that you generate on the rest of the system when you're restoring a load is lower, right? Since you're pulling from more servers. Um, so a low scatter width is a low uh, chance of loss, um, a high amount of data that you might lose, and a slow restore. And then a high scatter width is a high chance of loss, a low amount of, 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 uh, you know, of, of loss, and then a fast restore. So you can use basically S as a way to tune your, uh, your failure scenarios. All right. Why would you want to tune your failure scenarios? Okay, so the paper talks about um, uh, talks about tape backup. Um, I don't know when. I don't think I've ever seen uh, tape in my career. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it still exists somewhere. Uh, so, so the thing about tape is that um, there's a very very high fixed cost to accessing tape, right? There's like I don't know some robot I imagine that's like walking down the hallway and like pulling out some some drive and inserting it into a machine that was built in 1970, right? So if you're going to go to tape. Right, high latency for your very first byte. Um, the amount of time that it takes you to restore one meg versus one gig is the same, right? Um, if you're going to restore one gig, you may as well restore one terabyte or maybe one petabyte. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, like the marginal cost of it is um, is low. It's just a very very high fixed cost. So you might want to really not fail very often because there's a very high fixed cost to going to tape. Um, more relevant to Chartbeat is uh, if we have a site outage. Um, if we have any kind of an outage, we have to go to Twitter and admit we failed. Uh, I might prefer, you know, if we're going to say uh, half of our clients uh, were, were affected, like I might prefer, uh, prefer that with a lower chance of having to go to Twitter in the first place uh, compared to saying only 5% of our clients were affected and like always going to Twitter every week or something. Right. So there, you know, there, uh, there's some trade-offs here. Okay, so that's the end of the copy sets paper. Now I'm going to move to tiered replication. Um, uh, but you should read both anyway, so. Um, all right, well, it's a sticky button. Either that or a heavy finger. All right, here, what did you say? All right, tiered replication. Okay, so, so we know that um, we can control failures uh, by changing the scatter width, right? So the real question is, okay, how do we figure out our, um, our sets given some n, r, and s? Uh, copy this replication solves it with a randomized algorithm. We're not going into that. Uh, tiered replication solves it with a greedy algorithm. So it's very simple, right? So the basic idea is this. So we start with, uh, so the end result of this is going to be a set of sets. So we start with an empty set of sets. Um, and we say, okay, we're going to take 
every single node in the system, right, will calculate the scatter width for every node, which at the very start is zero, right, because they're not, uh, no node is actually in any copy set. So we'll calculate the scatter width, we'll, we'll order the nodes, and then we'll pick the first R of them, and that will be one set. Okay, so we'll insert, we're, we'll insert that into our set of sets, and then we'll repeat this process um, until every single node has a scatter width greater than or equal to our target, our, our, our S. So straightforward, does this make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Is he, oh, okay, yes, okay. Um, so yeah, so you know, this is basically it's you know if if you it's it's a greedy algorithm. If you're being greedy and simple, this is what you do. Um, so uh, what's kind of cool about this is uh, tiered replication doesn't just stop there. They add a constraint function. So they say, okay, rather than just picking the the first R nodes that have the lowest scatter width, right? Like like the point is to get all, all the nodes up to the uh, t to the required scatter width, right? So rather than picking uh, the nodes with, this, with, with the lowest scatter width, what we'll do is we'll pick them, but we'll also throw on some kind of an arbitrary constraint. So what are some examples of constraints? Um, rack awareness for one, right? We might want um, all of our copy sets to, uh, to exist in at least two racks. Like it would be disastrous if, um, if we had a copy set with two nodes that were in the same rack and then the rack lost power, we, we lose data. Okay. So that's, that's one reason to do it. Um, there's another reason, which is uh, resources differences in nodes, right? So maybe some nodes are older, right? Have less disk, less CPU or something. Some nodes are newer. So you might want to like bias towards putting data on, on the nodes that are beefier. Um, and finally, uh, tiered storage, right? This is where the tiered and tiered replication comes from. Uh, I had not really heard of this before. I, I, you know, I think it's a well-known concept, but the, uh, the paper doesn't really say. I will go into that now. Um, okay, so, so uh, the, first, uh, the first section of the tiered replication paper goes into, um, into explaining sort of different, um, or not different, but like one, uh, one primary way of looking at failure. So mean time to failure. So they say um, random replication, if you have correlated failure, R is equal to three, so it's, it's this very, very bottom line right here. The, amount, the number of years that it takes for you to lose data is basically, it's less than one, right? It's, it's like, it's, it's close to zero, right? You know, for, uh, you know, and as the number of nodes goes up, uh, things get worse because the likelihood that um, you know, some, some failure will affect some set that your data is on is, is, uh, is higher. Okay, so that's random replication. Um, Facebook replication, right? So that's the one where, uh, where there's like a ring of, um, of nodes. Uh, it's a bit better. I mean, you know, mean time to failure of 10 years, I guess, is, well, that's fantastic for Charpeed. For Facebook, you know, they're probably expecting to exist for more than 10 years. But um, so, you know, it's, it's better as the clusters get bigger, though, right? 1,000 nodes is probably a pretty small cluster for Facebook. Um, as the cluster gets larger and larger, it's uh, uh, their chance of failure, you, you know, like it, it starts to get more uncomfortable, right? Copy set replication, so that's the red triangle that's pointing up. You can see it's better. You're in the range of 100 so years, um, which I guess is pretty good. Um, uh, oh, I, I, should, I should back up and mention uh, these graphs are generated through, they, they, do this, uh, they, they do this Markov chain thing, and they have like various assumptions about number of nodes that go down in a month and how long the nodes are down. And, you know, so and, so, and, and like how long it takes for nodes to, to restore. There are a lot of assumptions baked in. They pull these numbers sort of empirically from, uh, uh, from data that Yahoo gave them. Um, the, so the line that I want to point out, though, is, um, is the blue triangle that's pointing down. So that's Facebook replication uh, independent failures R is equal to 2 versus the blue square, which is Facebook uh, replication independent failures R is equal to 3. Right? So the difference here is uh, somewhere around 10 to the 5 versus 10 to the 10, right? So 10 to the 5 is a long time. 10 to the 10 is like even longer, right? <laughs> um, it might not be worth it to actually have an R, an, an, an R of 3 here, right? But people kind of do R of 3 anyways. So, right, so the paper addresses this. They say um, people do R of 3 because of like performance reasons or whatever. Um, it's, uh, it's, actually, um, it's actually not so important. In practice, you get uh, the best latencies or you get the most... Uh, most effect for decreasing latencies if you have an R of two. Um, instead, what we're gonna do is say, well, R of three is just in case you have three failures, so why don't we take your third replica and put it on a machine that is cheap, right optimized, and you expect to never read from, right? 
So that's, that's where the tiered and tiered replication comes from. Um, and uh, uh, that's the constraint that they give. Uh, and it turns out to be great. So, all right. Um, so this is a real world use case. Uh, at Sharpie, we, we, we run Apache Kafka. Um, Kafka is, uh, it, it, like, it's got this notion of topics, which is kind of like a, a type of a message that you're pushing through. Every topic has some number of partitions. Um, and then you have to, uh, in, in Kafka, say every partition, um, its data is copied onto some, some number of nodes. Um, Kafka has a handy like button basically that's just random replication, right? It'll just uh, just pick nodes for you, um, but it also has a really handy feature which is which, which allows you to say what you want those nodes to be. Um, this is something that if you are a database vendor, I would encourage you to do. Um, React, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, does not do this because uh, they charge for uh, for rack awareness. Um, but anyways, so. Um, all right, so this is Kafka. Uh, we, we, we wrote the tiered, uh, we wrote this library in Python called Treple that does the tiered replication stuff. We use it for, um, you know, for a Kafka uh, cluster. Um, Sharpie, we push a bunch of data into Kafka. Um, we do six brokers. We do an R of two. Uh, we used to do an R of three um, uh, with, uh, with nodes in every AZ. And it turns out in Amazon, you actually have to pay for traffic between AZs. So we reduced that to two and then threw in, uh, threw in tiered replication to sort of minimize the cost of failures. Um, this ends up actually being, uh, being a huge cost reduction. Uh, we do AZ aware assignment, which is, bas which is basically rack awareness. The treble library has rack awareness and tiered, uh, uh, and tiered storage built into it, um, those, those constraints built into it. So uh, if you're a Python user, go and, go and use it. Um, OK, so some random final notes. Um, this stuff can be applied to load balancing as well. So you have a bunch of services behind some proxy, ELB, HA proxy, or something like that, right? Uh, if you do random assignment of uh, queries to services, um, and you have a query that is basically a poison pill, like you know, let's say it's a query for for data for some customer, uh, and this customer has a ton of data, and it like brings down the service, or maybe it triggers a bug or something, you will actually bring down your entire uh, your entire service cluster. Um, if, you, if you're just randomly picking things, if you're using something like tiered replication, you will bring down a subset of your customers uh, depending on what your S is. Um, copy sets in general is an MP hard problem. Uh, they briefly mentioned this in the paper. Uh, for certain values of, um, of S, uh, the solution is trivial. So for S is equal to one, it's trivial. For S is equal to N minus one, it's trivial. Uh, for values in between, it's not. Um, it turns out that if your, if your n is large, right, so if it's in thousands, your r is small, like three, and your s is small-ish, you know, let's say six or something, uh, the greedy algorithm actually works pretty well in that case. Um, they very briefly and very tantalizingly mentioned this combinatorial design literature thing. So, so they say that, that, uh, that this, this kind of a problem is actually, um, it, uh, it occurs elsewhere in life. So, for instance, if you are um, if you if you are a farmer and you're trying to figure out uh, uh, what characteristics of soil do well for certain kinds of seeds, um, it's the same kind of a problem. Uh, you have a limited number of sets, like plots of land, each of which has have different characteristics. You'd like to spread the seeds across as many plots as you can. You have to hit all the seeds. So you think about copy sets as being plots of land, and the nodes as being different variants of seeds. It's the same thing. Um, people have been dealing with this for a while, I guess. Um, and the the, uh, the the final thing that I I'd, I'd like to point out this this comes from uh, my experience um, running tier replication in production at Sharpie is that it's actually it's really really hard to to to, to decide on the trade offs right like how much failure are you actually w willing to tolerate it's like it's more of a product problem than an engineering problem I would say um, but it um, yeah it it results in a lot of uh, sort of hemming and hawing and debate so. Um, so anyways, okay, so there, there's some links here. Uh, the uh, the copy sets paper um, is a good one. The tier replication paper is also a very good one, but not quite as well known as the copy sets one. Um, go and read them. All right, thanks. We can take uh, a couple of questions. Uh, if you want to get some more refreshments for pizza before the next talk, uh, you should do that now, but we'll take a couple of questions. Anybody? So is everyone actually going to go and do this? Yeah, he's <laughs> like, oh, I got this already. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, Leaf, uh, can somebody get a mic? Uh, thank you, Clemente. Um, so you're, 
Your description of um, scatter width, I think, made a lot of sense when r equals 2, but I was a little bit confused when r equals 3. So when I'm restoring, I have to copy data from one server in each set that I'm a part of, but I also have the option to copy data from any of the servers in the same set. Right, um, yeah. So in some sense, scatter width is capturing, like, which aspect of that? So yeah, so let me, uh, uh, let's see. Okay, so here's, so here's an example of scatter width is four. Um, so the idea here is, is um, every piece of data that's on A, right, also exists on B, C, E, and F. Some of these things, for, for instance, every piece of data that's on A that exists on B is also on C, but that doesn't mean that you have to restore all data um, uh, from just B in that set. Right, so like in that set, you could restore, right, like the very first set, for, for all, all keys, say, that are mapped to the very first set, you, you, you could choose to restore half of them from B and half from C. I think that answers your question, is that? I think so, too. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Uh, another question, anybody? Oh, you got one more? Yep. Um, yeah, you had that slide up um, just now with, uh, with scatter width again, about like when you have a low scatter width, you have some properties, and with the high scatter width, you have some other properties. Could you put that back up, please? Yeah. Uh, where is it? No, wrong direction. I picked wrong. There we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to see that. Okay. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it in my head. Uh, the slides are available. So go to bit.ly.com slash abalone dash xylophone, and you will get to this. You can, you can give us the link as well. We can put it up. Okay. All right. Okay, cool? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make it easy for everybody. Uh, cool. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Is a question? Any other question? All right, cool. Thank you, Wes. All right, thank you. Thanks so much.